Hello my dear children, so I am back with the second video of the video series on weather climate and adaptations class 7 science and in this video our agenda would be to understand in more detail about rainfall, climate and adaptations. I am Roshni from Learner Hub, the free learning platform where you get to study everything about maths and science absolutely for free at learnerhub.com. So are we all ready to learn? Let's get started. So let us now talk about another element of weather which is a very important element and that is rainfall. Now we often uh, talk of rainy days, we often, uh, the sc our schools get shut down if it is raining very heavily. So what is this rainfall and how do we measure how much rainfall is taking place at a particular place. So for measuring rainfall we have something called as rain gauge. So this rain gauge helps to measure the amount of rainfall at a particular place. Now you would have uh, learned it in your GK that or general knowledge that which place receives highest rainfall in India and you would have learned it that Cherapunji is the place. Now how do we know that which place receives more rainfall and which place receives less rainfall? So there has to be something which can measure it accurately how much rain is happening at a particular place. So that is why this rain gauge has been designed. So here in this picture you can actually see how a rain gauge looks like. It is It, it looks like a cylindrical tube right. One smaller cylinder inside a bigger cylinder that is how it is appearing to me. So let us now try to see what is a rain gauge and how does it measure rain. So let us look at a bigger picture of a rain gauge. So there are three important parts in a rain gauge. So the first important part is a funnel as you can see here you have a funnel like structure here. So that funnel is one important part because funnel is that part which actually helps to collect the rain. So that's the funnel. Inside you have a tube that is the inner measuring tube. So that is the tube which actually measures the amount of rainfall. So therefore it is the measuring tube. And outside you have a cylindrical structure, right? So this one is the outer cylinder. So these are the three important parts of a rain gauge. Now how do we measure rain? Now when it rains, now this upper part is open. So that's how the funnel is going to collect the rainfall. So when it rains, the funnel will collect the rainfall and the rain and then the rain will get collected in the inner cylinder. So you see the funnel is actually linked to the inner measuring tube. So the rain will come into the inner measuring tube and the inner measuring tube is actually graduated with values. So it can actually measure how much water is coming to this tube. Now this tube can measure up to 25 millimeter of rainfall. So 25 millimeter is nothing but the height of this tube. So the measurements which I mentioned there. Now the question is let's suppose if it is raining very heavily so the inner tube will get immediately filled up. So how are we going to measure the excess amount of rain that is coming in. So any excess amount of rain is captured in the outer cylinder and that is why we have an, a bigger outer cylinder. So look at this picture it will give it is giving you a better view. So the inner cylinder is only up to this much. But the thickness of the outer cylinder is much more so it can actually accommodate a lot of water so all the excess water will get collected in this outer cylinder and then how are we going to measure it and then what we will do is first we will measure the water that is there in the inner cylinder we will pour the water outside and we will again take the water from the outer cylinder and put it into the inner cylinder and then again measure it so using the inner cylinders calibration Rainfall as low as 0.1 inch can also be measured. So their calibration is done in such a way that even a small amount of rainfall, even a few drops of rainfall can also be measured. So that's how we can decide where we are having less rainfall and where we are having more rainfall. So I'll quickly repeat the process how we actually measure it. So let us suppose it is raining very heavily. So what, ha what will happen when it is raining very heavily? So very soon the inner measuring tube will be full. 
so when it is full so you already know what is the maximum capacity of the inner tube so that is let us say in this case that is 25 millimeter so 25 millimeter you have already measured so now what you do this 25 milliliter you take out from this tube and you just keep it somewhere else outside you pour that water outside so now you have this inner cylinder empty now all the excess water has been collected in the outer cylinder so from outer cylinder you pour it into the inner cylinder and again you measure it so let's say again it became completely full so again you add 25 millimeter right and now let us say whatever you put it is maybe two or three millimeters okay so you just write it two millimeter and now you add this all up to get the rainfall or to measure the rainfall so in fact this is how rainfall is measured now how do we determine whether this much rainfall is a less rainfall or heavy rainfall or moderate rainfall so for that purpose we have uh, decided a range that okay if the rainfall measured comes to be in this range then it is moderate rainfall if it comes in this range then it is heavy rainfall so what is that range so any rainfall so less rainfall or low rainfall low rainfall or less rainfall would be less than 0.1 inch so inch per hour so that is because time plays a very important role maybe you just kept it like this for 10 12 hours so obviously it will get filled up so you have to specify a fixed time maybe in one hour how much what how much ever it will get filled that will decide the measurement of rainfall so if the amount of water collected is less than 0.1 inch in one hour then we will say it has the play that location got low rainfall what would be moderate rainfall so moderate rainfall would be anything in the range of 0 0.10 to 0 0.30 inches per hour so this would be the range for moderate rainfall and when you talk about heavy rainfall so heavy rainfall would be anything more than 0 0.30 inches per hour so that would be heavy rainfall so basically with rain gauge uh, rainfall amount is described as the depth of the water which is reaching the ground in inches so you, we are actually trying to measure the depth of the water which is reaching inside this tube so that's what we are trying to do so this is how rainfall is measured and that is now you got an idea that why do we see that okay Chirapunji gets maximum rainfall because when you try to measure rainfall of different locations you can actually get the values and those values will be able to tell you which place gets how much rainfall so that was about weather so we learned that weather is about the atmospheric conditions which changes from day to day now the question is what is climate because for a lot of us we feel that weather and climate looks like synonyms but actually they are not so when we talk about climate it is about the weather which has been observed for a particular place over a long period of time maybe when you uh, actually study the weather for say 25 or 30 years for a particular place and then you arrive at a conclusion about the climate of that place so climate is always a long term term so when we use the word weather we are talking about day to day changes in atmospheric conditions when we are using the word climate we are talking about the overall web atmospheric conditions of that place based on our observations of large number of years so climate can be defined as the average weather pattern over a long period of time so when we say climate it is something like this let us suppose if you talk about jammu and kashmir so we say that jammu and kashmir has a cold climate what does that mean that doesn't mean that today the uh, weather in jammu and kashmir is cold that doesn't mean that when we say cold climate that means that if you look at the average weather pattern of Jammu and Kashmir, for the, uh, then you would see that most of the time it is cold. Now, similarly, if you say that generally Rajasthan has a hot and dry climate, the northeast states, so somewhere here, so these north states, they generally have humid or heavy rainfall. So they generally have heavy 
rainfall so this is this has a cold climate these places generally they are dry again if you talk about the coastal areas so these are the coastal areas so these coastal areas are generally humid so all these uh, statements which involve climate that means that the weather for these particular places have been observed for a huge number of years for example the weather pattern of jammu and kashmir for every day has been noticed for maybe 20 years or 25 years and then we have observed that more or less the weather the climate in jammu and kashmir is cold so how do we arrive at this conclusion on climate so what is done actually is for every location for example jammu and kashmir rajasthan northeast states so for every location we prepare a chart for their weather so to see how the weather changes from time to time so for every month like how was the weather during january how was the weather during february march and so on so again weather changes day to day so even in january you will observe the weather patterns of every day so that's how you get an idea about the weather in january weather in february weather in march and looking at the weather conditions of past several years you say that the climate of this particular place is cold or it is dry or it has heavy rainfall so climate can be decided based on the weather pattern of a particular place so i am sure now the confusion between climate and weather is clear so whenever you are talking about the atmospheric conditions of a particular day it is weather but when you are talking about uh, the overall weather pattern of a particular place then it is climate so now that we have been talking about weather and climate we learned that uh, the atmospheric conditions of different places are very much different from each other so if you compare uh, in in india itself if you try to compare the climate of jammu and kashmir with the climate of say rajasthan they are very different from each other now how does this affect the living organisms which are living in that particular area so a particular set of organisms which are uh, good enough to live in extreme cold conditions only they will be able to stay in cold places similarly those animals which can which can adapt to uh, hot areas they can only stay in hot places so this is what we are going to learn in adaptation that how different living organisms adapt or adjust to different environments for their survival so let us take the example of this polar bear so this bear they have thick fur on their body so why do they have thick fur so that they can survive in extremely cold climate because fur provides warmth to the body so the fur provides warmth to the body so therefore they can very well survive in cold now let's suppose you take this polar bear and ask them to live in rajasthan where the area when the climate is very hot dry and they tend to feel hot every time so will they be able to survive no because they have their natural fur on their body it is not a furry sweater that they can open it so with this fur their body will have too much of heat so they will not be able to survive in extremely hot areas on the other hand if you look at this camel so camel are perfect to survive in dry regions why because these camel they can live without water for a large number of days and why is that possible why can they live without water for long for many days that's because they can take in water in a very huge amount for example in case of human beings we all tend to feel thirsty over a couple of hours maybe when you talk more you tend to feel thirsty even quickly so within few hours you need some water to drink but in case of camels when they drink water they can actually drink it in very very large amount and then they can store it for their future use so therefore they can live without needing any water for uh, many days maybe up to 14 or 15 days and again when they take water they will compensate for all the previous fluid losses and they take a lot of water 
also these camel they are for their adaptation they have this hump and this hump is used to store food so now it, it also helps them to uh, travel in their, their feet that is also uh, well adapted to walk on sand so you see it is like camel is facilitated with all properties which help them to survive on in desert areas whereas polar bear is uh, facilitated with all those properties which help them to survive in the polar regions where it is extremely cold where it is always covered with ice so some in a very similar way different organisms are adapted in different ways so that they can live in specific locations so adaptation refers to the features and habits of organisms to better suit to an environment. Now, when we say adjustments or adaptation, it is not only about the physical appearance or the physical features. It is also about the behavior of that organism or the habits of that organism, which helps them to uh, suitably live in a particular environment. I hope you found the video useful and if you really understood the concept well, do write in the comment section that concept who are crystal clear. And I will see you all very soon with a new topic and a new video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.